very good afternoon to all the students present in this webinar and also to our uh, youtube channel viewers and dear friends covid 19 is said to change many things one of which is interview mechanism which every student has to face for getting the jobs in coming year online interviews are going to take a big space of offline interviews that's why today training and placement cell has uh, taken this initiative to make our students well versed about this new normal of post covid 19 era that is virtual interviews therefore friends how to ace or successfully crack the online interviews or the virtual interviews is our today's topic of discussion and for such a wonderful and important important topic we are having with us a wonderful and important speaker mr abhijit bhattacharya i welcome on behalf of training and placement cell abhijit ji please make your video on welcome sir thank you thank you very much so i would like to uh, tell our viewers about uh, mr abhijit ji uh, mr abhijit bhattacharya is a certified nlp practitioner a certified facilitator for ddi that is development dimensions international which is an international human resources and leadership development consultancy mr abhijit ji is is certified to deliver high end leadership programs including dale carnes high impact presentation skills crestcoms bulletproof manager series and franklin covey's seven habits of highly effective people having three decades experience across diverse industries in leadership development coaching and mentoring sales and account management mr abhijit has interfaced with industry leading clients like escorts fortis indian airlines hcl idea tata tele services and many more in his latest assignment abhijit ji has worked as coo at crest point consultants he has been also a visiting faculty at institutions like emti business school and nift so today we are having with us a very important and wonderful person having such a important profile so let's all have big round of applause to welcome our today's speaker mr abhijit ji and now i hand over the control to mr abhijit ji he will interact with all the students thank you thank you malik sir thank you very much welcome students good afternoon to all of you uh, i see there are quite a few of you already here it's very very good to be with all of you today and i thank uh, malik sahab and his whole team for getting me on here with all of you uh, we are going to we have about uh, an hour or a little more than an hour today and uh, i'm of course going to share my slides and then i'm going to talk about a few things i also know that some of you have sent in some questions we have try, we will try and answer those questions as we move along in our session but uh, at the same time if you have some questions it will be a very good idea if you make a note of those questions uh, towards the end of the session we will uh, dedicate about uh, 10 15 minutes for a question and answer session so and if you have specific questions we can take your questions at that time during the course of the session i'm also going to ask you certain questions and if you want to say something you can always click on the raise hand sign and uh, our, our friend vikas will unmute you and we will be able to hear what you have to say it will be a good idea for you to make a certain comments and say certain things because that is what makes an int uh, session interesting and engaging for all of us as much as it is going to be my effort to make the program interesting uh, engaging for all of you uh, i think it will also going to be very very important that uh, each one of you make an effort to make this program interesting all right so having said that uh, i think it's time for us to begin and we are trying to look at how to ace virtual interviews of course in uh, today's day and age the whole world has got become virtual and uh, covid 19 has uh, entailed that all of us do a whole lot of things right from where we are so therefore there is a question of virtual interviews but when i'm going to run the session today of course i'm going to talk about uh, and stress about virtual interviews but at the same time if you 
take these points into consideration. And if you, if you make a note of the uh, things that I'm going to highlight upon, I'm sure it is not only going to hold you good in your virtual interviews, it will also hold you extremely well in your regular interviews as well, as and when you have it. In the, in the near future, of course, is going to be a whole lot of virtual interviews. So let's start by asking you a question. What is an interview? So what is an interview or what is the purpose of an interview? Why does an organization or why do employers use interview as a tool? What are they wanting to do? Would any of you like to share any of your thought and idea? You can you can write on the chat window. You can also uh, raise your hand if you want to speak out something. Please tell us, what do you think? What is an interview or why do you think an interview happens? For selecting capable personnel according to the requirements. Very good. I think that's uh, Lena writing. Okay, anybody else? Any other thing? Why, why an interview? Yeah, yeah, you can't see the slides because I've removed the slides. The slide will come, don't worry. We're just having a discussion around it at this moment. Interactive way between rational employer and tactical imaginative employee, okay? Yeah, well, tactical or imaginative, we don't know. That is only to be known after the interview. But yes, certainly that's, that's a good one. Anybody else? Any other thing? Okay. Now, interview as a tool is used across the world. Across the world, interviewers use interview as a tool to do what? Here is what they use this tool for. It is a tool employed by interviewer to assess skills, talents, awareness levels, inquisitiveness, and more of the prospective employee. Now, what happens is people usually, we, we send a CV or we call, send a resume out to the prospective employer, and we hope that he will like what we have written in our resume, and therefore he will call us to interview us. And an inter interview, uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Some companies, of course, uh, do five rounds, six rounds of interviews. I remember uh, about uh, 12 years ago in my career, I was hired by one of India's largest IT companies. I, I worked in Wipro for about six years. And in my interview in Wipro, the interview went on for six rounds. Six different people, finance interviewed, HR interviewed, business interviewed. Then, then the uh, person who had the requirement for that particular position interviewed. So everybody, it's a tool being employed by people to assess the different levels of talents, awareness, and skills that you have. So it's not just about what you have in your resume. Because you may put your educational qualifications in your resume. But the interviewer is not just interested in your educational qualification. He is interested in much more. Now, that is the reason why I always tell young people like all of you that no matter how much great or how good your educational qualifications are, you see, for the interviewer is just a line which says a B.Tech or an MBA or whatever it is. Now, just writing that does not make you legible or eligible for a job. It is your skills. It is your talent. It is your awareness level. They also want to see whether this person has the achievement orientation. Is this person more tactical? Is this person more strategic in nature? There are very many things that interviewer wants to assess during the course of his interview. And that is why he employs interview as a tool to assess all of that. I remember 
Uh, the other day, I was at a company as a software company called CGI, which is a Canadian software company. And uh, I, I do go to them because they invite me to sit in their panel. I was sitting in the panel. We were we were to, had to interview about 15, 20 people that day. And I tell you, not a single question was related to their educational background. Most of the questions were generally related to how aware is this student? So even if a student came from a B-Tech mechanical background, we would ask him questions to do with you know, overall technology and how it is affecting people's lives. So it is not just about the educational qualifications, but really beyond that is what the interviewer wants to assess. So this is one important thing that all of us must clearly understand that they are wanting to assess various aspects in our personality, in our ability, in our attitude, so that they can make the right decision for their organization. Now, having said this, let's look at what are certain things we need to do before the interview. These are two, three very important uh, points to be looked at before the interview. One of the most important thing, and this I'm telling you students, this is the most important thing, which is point number two on the screen, is to review your resume. I see youngsters, you have a set of resume and whatever application or whatever vacancies come, the same CV goes out everywhere. Now, that is the most inappropriate thing to do. The most appropriate thing to do is to review your resume based on the job description that is given in the vacancy advertisement. You cannot have the same CV going out everywhere because remember, every job requirement is different. And therefore, you have to tailor or literally tweak your resume in such a way that it suits that particular job requirement or the job description, JDs it is called. All right, so review your resume based on the job requirement. Just don't let your resume, same resume go out for every job requirement. Tailor it, stitch it, tweak it, modify it, change it if required to suit to that job posting or to that job description that is given. So review a resume. Another point is to practice answering questions. Now we all think, Are, what is there? I will prepare the question and answer in my mind. And when I go to the interview, bas bol denge yaar. Aise nahi hota hai. We have to prepare, we have to practice. Anything in this world requires some practice. Wouldn't you all agree? So why not practicing questions to, that is going to be asked in an interview? Get hold of somebody, maybe a couple of friends who say, hey, um, here are a set of questions, ask me these questions. And then you try and answer them. Today, all of you carry smartphones. If you have a smartphone, Put the recorder in, record your whole conversation, listen to it yourself. See, hey, what can I do here? What could I do? Could I have done here better? How can I improve this section? That is how you practice answering questions. Because if you do that three, four, five times, what will happen? When you reach the interview, you are a man or a, or a, a lady full of confidence. And remember, majority of the time, you will be given the job, not because of what great educational qualification you have, but because you showed great attitude through the confidence that you displayed during your interview. So remember to practice answering questions. You must be thinking why I'm not talking about the first point. That's what I'm coming to now. It's very important that before you go for the interview, you do a lot of research about the organization. Very, very important. Now, what, what your research should include? Here is what your research must include. 
you should be able to find out the size of the organization. When I say size, I just don't mean size in terms of number of people. It could be number of people, it could be revenue, it could be market share, it could be anything which is to do with the size of the organization. Also, do some study about the reputation. Find out what are the products, what are the service lines that this particular organization has. Find out about service line, find out about products services what is it that the organization has so your research must include all of that when you do that research what will happen you become much much more confident and i am telling you simply interviewer no matter who the interviewer is will ask you what do you know about my company now, if he asks you that question, what do you know about our company? And he says, sorry, sir, I don't know anything about it. I mean, you are going to cut an extremely sorry figure with that interviewer. So it's very important that you do enough research. Find out product line, find out service line, find out size, reputation. Just to give you an example, supposing... If I asked you, which is the largest company in the world in terms of manpower, what would you say? Any guesses? Which is the largest company in terms of manpower, number of people working? Any, any? Maybe Google. No, it is not Google. Any other guesses? Anybody? See, I'm, I'm just trying to give you an example of information. Amazon, no. Facebook, no. No. Let me tell you, you may not have heard the name of the company, but the name of the company is Federal Express or FedEx. FedEx is a supply chain company, and it is the world's largest. They have a one million people working in the company. One million means more than 10 lakhs. So now... Supposing you were going to FedEx and FedEx asked you, why would you like to work with FedEx? And if you, if you say, well, I know it's the largest company in terms of people and I would like to work in the company with so many people because if I have so many people working around me, I, I'm sure I'll get the opportunity to learn and develop myself. So what are you telling the interviewer? You are indirectly telling the interviewer that here is a candidate who has done his or her research and is ready to face the whole thing. Okay, so very important that you do the research about the organization. Also find out accomplishment failures. Find out if they have been in the news recently for something or the other. Also find out the, about their stocks. Stocks don't mean just looking at their stock price. One, of course, is stock price. Other is how much is their market specialized uh, capitalization? What size? I mean, everything. The more you find out about the company, the more you are proving to the interviewer that you are serious about it. I remember in one of my interviews, and this was my interview in Wipro, I, I had gone there half an hour early and I was sitting in the lobby waiting for my turn. And I was looking around and suddenly my eyes fell on the, on the walls and I saw something written there. There was a poster there and the poster said, Spirit of Wipro. Of course, it didn't take me too long to understand what it meant because once I read through it, I understood those were three set of values that Wipro you know, um, deemed important for them. So during the course of my interviewer, the interviewer asked me something and I quickly referred to those set of values and I say, I think I'm a right candidate because I also pursue same similar kind of values. And I talked about intensity to win and unyielding integrity. These were two values which were there. So what I'm saying, it is not just logging in. It is about keeping your eyes and ears open to gather information 
so much information about the company that you're going in that you make yourself the best candidate. When the interviewer looks at you and assesses you, he realizes that you know so much. You know much more than he knows about his company. He says and he appreciates in his mind and he says, goodness me, this is the kind of candidate. This is the kind of person I'd like to hire in my organization. So think about it. Very, very important that you do this particular part before your interview. All right. So I have uh, concluded my section, which is about your preparation before the interview. Now let me go into the interview itself. The first thing about the interview is your appearance. And I think I'd like to spend a little bit about your appearance. Many people have told me, uh, many senior HR managers have told me that the decision to hire or not hire is made within a few seconds. Question is, how do they make that study in the first few seconds? To hire or not to hire? Because remember, the moment they see you, they create an impression in their minds. They quickly form an idea in their mind. Are, achha, ye to kaam ka dikhta hai. Or ye kaam ka nahi dikhta hai. Both. Both can be true. Now, how can one's appearance tell the other person ki ye kaam ka banda hai ya nahi hai? It is a lot to do with how we appear. And therefore, if you see in the slide, I'm talking first about the appearances of men. I'm, I'm coming to the uh, ladies in a little while. First, let me talk about men. Quickly, not too many things, of course. I'm sure you all know most of it. But for men, very important is to get your face and your hair nice. See, uh, now women can do a lot on the face. Ma a man can't do anything. The man has to shave. So please shave. Now, if you are a bearded person, you can, of course, keep your beard. But don't let your beard fly here and fly there. Your beard must be nicely trimmed. I mean, Virat Kohli is a great example. <laughs> I'm sure all of you realize that Virat is a great example of a person who has a beard and then also keeps his beard so well and neatly neat. And that is the secret. Second is the hair. Because your hair is like the frame of your face. And you need to, therefore, keep your hair nicely combed. Keep your hair nice and tidy. You cannot have hair flying here and flying there. So that will become a little bit of a distraction. Now, of course, in a virtual platform, people will not see you physically. But today, every laptop, mobile phone has very high, powerful cameras. And they can see your face very, very clearly. So that's why put some attention to your face and your hair. Second thing. Now, many people will say, Are, dikhta nahi hai, yaar, to kuch bhi sakte hai. No, I, I disagree with you completely. Look at me today and I'm going to put my camera on. I'm deliberately putting it on for you to see me. Now, I am sitting at home and I'm doing this session for all of you. I don't need to dress in this jacket, but I have done it. Why? The question is, it's not about showing it to you. It is for myself. When I dress well, I feel good. I feel more confident. That similar is you. So, घर से बैठ के करें कुछ भी पहन लो जी बयान दे दूँगा तो as simple as that. See, when you dress well, you feel good, you feel confident, and it is your confidence that will make a big difference with your interview. Please remember that's why even in a virtual environment, please dress well. Dress properly because when you dress properly, you will make a huge difference with your confidence. Moving ahead, I'd like to talk a little bit about women's dressing. Uh, many of our uh, young ladies will feel that I do not have the 
qualification to talk about women's dressing. But I can tell you, I have uh, in several of my roles as in, in uh, universities and colleges, I have interacted with young ladies. As a, as a head of one organization, I led Crest Point Consultants for uh, three years. And I had uh, at one time about 55, 56 people working with me, out of which about 35, 40 of them were young ladies. So I have had the privilege of working with young women for a long time. And I can tell you a few things about their dressing. So here are some quick thoughts. Now for women, you can wear Western formals, you can wear Indian formals, that's not a problem. But the point is, whatever you wear, remember always to wear lighter colors. Lighter colors always project you positively. Darker colors always project you negatively. So if you have to wear a Western outfit like a shirt and a trouser, be careful that the shirt has a light color. Similarly, if you're wearing a salwar kameez, which is the Indian dress, look at the colors that you are wearing. Always go for lighter colors because lighter colors always create a positive atmosphere around you. If you wear a salwar kameez, secure your dupatta with pins. It's a small little point, but I'm sure all of you young ladies would understand why I have put it up in the slide because it's a very, very important thing. And even in a virtual interview, you may be asked to write something or you may require to write something. And if you kind of bend, your dupatta may slip. So that's why it's a good idea to secure it with pins. Uh, women can, of course, use a little makeup. So you can use a little uh, natural looking make makeup, clear nail polish. No rings, no bangles. You can't have, you know, bangles all uh, in your hand and go for that interview, virtual or no virtual. And finally, the hair. Hair should be neatly tied and well groomed for women as well. Remember, I've said this for men and I'm saying this for women as well, that for both men and women, your, your, your hair is very important. And if you can tie your hair back. And if for men also, if you have your hair away from your forehead, you will look much, much more mature. You will look much, much more confident. I'm sure you will understand that the interviewer does not want to hire somebody who is immature. The inter interviewer wants to hire somebody who is matured and confident. That is the reason why we need to take care of these small, small things. Okay, that's all about uh, dressing. Let's let me move forward, give you a, a few general guidelines. These general guidelines are very, very important, especially in the virtual world. Even in the virtual world, remember you are facing a camera. And I put my camera on to describe things to you here. Now, you see, we are talking about Nonverbal behavior. Nonverbal behavior is the expression on your face and the movement of your hands. All right. Very, very important. So you have got to be careful that you are projecting a positive image, a positive attitude with your nonverbal behavior, which includes your body language, also includes the tone of your voice. Now, look at the way I'm talking to you right now. now. Instead of talking to you like this, if I were saying, uh, well, um, you know, uh, uh, what would you think? You would not think of me as a confident presenter who's come to present with to you a few techniques of how to ace a virtual interview. I, I would come across as somebody who is very, very hesitant in nature. Okay, so your verbal, uh, so your nonverbal behavior is a key. So remember, eye contact is a key. Now, how do you make eye contact in the virtual forum? In the virtual forum, you can look at the camera on your laptop, and that gives an impression to the people who are seeing you that you are looking at them in the eye. I'm trying to do that as I'm speaking to you right now. The moment you look at the camera, it gives an impression that you are making eye contact. 
All right? No folding or crossing your arms, no touching your mouth. I, I get one session for hours and hours, and I will never touch my mouth at all. Because the moment you touch your mouth, it gives an impression to the interviewer that you are not very confident about yourself. One point I'd like to talk a little more about, no faking a cuff to think about the answer. Many times in interviews, what happens? Interviewer asks you a question. Hey, where do you see yourself in the next five years? And this is a question you have not prepared. So what are you doing? You are thinking. And, to and during the time that you are thinking, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> the moment you cough like that, interviewer knows that you are not prepared. Interviewer knows that you are now trying to time to try and think so that you can get some kind of an answer. All right. So just just be be very very careful about these couple of uh, simple points. Last but not the least, your voice must express energy and enthusiasm. I'm sure I have been now talking to you for almost half an hour, and I want to ask all of you, what have you heard in my voice? Have you heard energy and enthusiasm? Yes or no? What would you say? Somebody saying voice is not clear. Somebody saying yes, sir. Yes, sir. Confident enough. Good. Thank you very much. Now, what makes it confident? It is my enthusiasm which makes it confident. I am so, since Malik Saab wanted me to run this program for all of you, you know, I had a conversation with him last night and I have been looking forward to it. I have been looking forward to say, I'm going to be interacting with some 50 or 100 odd young students. This is a great opportunity to me and that gives enthusiasm to me. And that is what you can hear in my voice. Remember, these guidelines which are there on this particular screen here is one of the most important ones, specifically for your virtual interview. Let me take you through a few more important points in an interview. Of course, in a virtual interview, you will be seated. seated important to listen carefully. See, in the virtual environment and what happens nowadays, because we are seeing a whole lot of sessions that are online, there is a problem, a little bit of problem with internet bandwidth also. Okay, I think somebody has a question, what does courteous mean? Courteous means to be, to uh, say good morning, good afternoon, get your manners right, use words like please, thank you, all of that is courteous, all right? All of that means that you uh, use common courtesies, like for example, if the interviewer says to you, please go ahead, thank you, sir, you know, saying, saying things which are courteous makes a lot of difference. I'll come to that salary expectation question, which I can see on the chat window a little later, all right? So here I have a few more points that I will cover. Salary expectations is definitely there as part of my agenda, and I will come to that in a little while. Just hold on to the thought of yours. Very, now what happens? There can be bandwidth issues, there can be network issues, so it's very important that you Listen carefully. And I always tell people, as you listen, always have a sheet of paper or a pad and a working pen near you. Write it down. Understand the question before you answer. If there is a doubt in your mind, if something is not very clear, seek clarification. Ask him. Or just if you have not heard, say, pardon, sir. Now, the moment you say, pardon, sir, it means that you did not, be, you were not able to hear it well. And if you have not been able to hear it well, he will repeat, the interviewer will repeat the question for your benefit. And then start answering it. But remember, never ever interrupt the interviewer. This is a 
matter of courtesy. This is a matter of great importance. This is a matter which may be the only reason between you getting the job or not getting the job. So you never interrupt interviewer, even if you think you know what he's asking. Many times what can happen, the course of the conversation can move in such a way that you may feel that you know the question. And therefore, you might be in a hurry to answer the question. I can understand you are eager because you know the question, you have anticipated the question, but still, I would suggest never interrupt because you really don't know because what you are thinking in your head may not be exactly what is there in his mind. And if you interrupt him, you might be regarded as somebody who is aggressive, somebody who is very pushy. Being too aggressive, too pushy is not such a good idea. Especially at the beginning of your career, if you come across as somebody very aggressive, very, very pushy, you may not be looked at very, very, you know, with, with great positivity by the interview. But I said that it's also important that you are not shy and timid. If you're too shy, if you're too timid, and if you're too demure, sitting there, your shoulders hunched up, not even, not even you know, sitting like this with your head down and um, stooping, it, you will come across as somebody who is very shy, very, very tentative. That will also not work. So it is a combination of less aggression, but at the same time, projecting confidence is what will make a huge difference with your interview. I have a few more points before I go into frequently asked questions. I am, of course, uh, listed down some frequently asked questions for all of you. But before that, I have one, one more slide to do. Here are a few more small points, but I feel they are very, very important points. Speak clearly and with enthusiasm. Clarity is, of course, something which will come when you open your mouth. And when, when you pronounce each and word that you are using effectively and pronounce it fully, that is when you will achieve clarity. But your enthusiasm is a matter of your voice. And enthusiasm, when it is there inside you, when you go to that interview with that enthusiasm in your head, it will come across. Come directly to the point, very important. In today's interviews, interviewers do not have the time to listen to large stories. So don't, don't waste time in a lot of stories. Come to the point. Yes, in the point itself, you can say your story, but don't beat around the bush. Come to the point and answer the question clearly. Always offer positive information. Just to give you an example of this, Many of us right now in this COVID situation are thinking of life very, very negatively. And supposing I'm an interviewer. Okay, somebody is asking a question about whether legs should be crossing or not. Uh, well, I think it's Lena. See, Lena, in a virtual environment, most often people will not see that. But having said that, it is not such a good idea to keep your legs crossed because what will happen? You yourself will, Lisa. Okay, sorry, sorry, Lisa. I'm sorry. In the virtual environment, people will not be able to make out. But in a real life environment, people will be able to make out. And therefore, it will not be such a good idea that you cross your legs. You should, And you should keep your hand on your lap not on the table, because the table is the interviewer's table. Yes, absolutely right. I think that's uh, Shalu Yadav, I think. Can we put our hands on the table or just put them in our, in your on your lap or on your lap? Uh, but if you are in a virtual interview 
And if you are sitting at home and doing a virtual interview, you can put your hands on the table. But do remember, Shalu, that your elbows should not go on the table. Let me demonstrate that to you by putting the cam my camera on. Let me demonstrate. Uh, I was just waiting for my camera to come on. Yeah, it's come on. So here it is. So if I'm here now, these are my hands. See, if I'm bringing it, I bring only up to the, my wrist, only up to the wrist. My elbow should not be visible to the interviewer. My wrist and my, if my fingers are visible to the interviewer, I'm fine. Shall you, does that answer your question? Thank you, Shalu. All right, so let, me, let me go ahead to the um, slides for the next few points. Uh, remember, stay with the positive side. I was giving you an example of this COVID situation and people interviewer may ask you, hey, do you think this is going to destroy the economy completely? Now, even if you think to some extent economy is getting destroyed, bring out the positive aspects. Say, well, sir, it may look like that uh, there are a lot of negativities, but I think there are a lot of positivities that are coming out of this situation as well and talk about that. What does it mean to the interviewer? It means to the interviewer that you are a person who is more optimistic than this. In businesses, what do we require? Um, not only in business, in life, what do we require? We require more positive thinkers than we require negative thinkers. I'm not saying negative thinkers are not required at all. Negative thinking probably are sometimes also required, probably. But most often in life, what is required is the positive thinking. And that's why if you can project yourself as somebody who's positive in nature, I'm sure it would do, go a long way in helping you get a job for yourself. A few more small points. Remember, honesty is always the best policy. Why I say, don't try to bluff the interviewer. Sometimes people try to bluff their way through. It does not work. Remember, many times you will see people who are industry veterans who come from these interviews. I know a friend of mine is he's with Accenture and he's the global service head, he's one of the top guys. He goes, he himself goes for camel center. Imagine. Now he has to see live. You can't bluff your way through. So if you don't know something, it's best to say, well, I think I'm not aware of this right now, but I, I give it the homework for myself. I'm going to go and do some research on this area. Don't try to bluff people. Very important. Be professional. Be yourself. Be calm. When I say be professional, what I mean, I mean no matter how sometimes the interviewer will be casual. Now you don't jump there. You keep your professional self and you be calm. Now, I know uh, Malik Saab sent me some uh, question. Somebody has asked a question there. What if I feel nervous? Of course you will be nervous. Everybody being, becomes nervous in an interview. So if you are nervous, you are only normal human being. Okay? Remember that. Now, what do you do with the nervousness is the question. Now, here are two, two points about the nervousness. One thing, if I'm getting nervous. So I can tell myself, oh my God, oh my God, what will happen to me? Now, if I do like that, I'm going to lose control and lose my calm. What do I do? I am nervous. So I talk to myself and I talk to myself positively. I say, I'm feeling a little nervous, but I've done my homework well. I've done my practice well, and I think I can do a good job. Now, of course, now remember, if you have done your homework well, which is your preparation, if you have done the practice well, which is answering questions, if you have done all of that, then you will be able to overcome your nervousness. But if you have not put in the hard work, it will be difficult. So remember, all the hard work that you put in before the interview 
holds you good during the interview. Last two points, small ones. Try to develop a little rapport with the interviewer. How do you do it? I have been talking to you on one way, see? Right now, our communication is just one way. But I'm still think in my head, I'm thinking, I've still built a little rapport with all of you. Two, three things I've done. I've smiled at you. I'm making eye contact with you. And whenever I've got an opportunity, I've used your names. Now, remember, these can also help you to build a little rapport with the interviewer. Finally, remember, don't forget to thank the interviewer. Thank him for everything. Thank him for giving you the time. Thank you for his time. Thank you. Thank him for listening to you. Do thank him. It, if, even if you don't get the job, doesn't matter. You will come across as a true professional and he will remember. Even if he's supposing not able to hire you, he will remember you. And you may come back into his head sometime later. And who knows? You may not get the job on that day, but you may get a call back later. It happens to many of us in our lives. Right? So don't forget these small, small little things. These are essentials and these are very, very important in all our lives. Finally, I'm now going to move into frequently asked questions. But before I go into frequently asked questions, here are what the questions will be about. First, of course, interviewer may ask you questions related to your educational background. He may ask you questions to do with your work life, if you have any. They will ask you to assess yourself. They will talk about your career goals, and they will also talk about your job knowledge. Frequently asked questions. Here they are. Now I need to now come back. This can be on I need to or oh, when I keep my video off, I'll be as better somebody says I'll keep my video off then. I'll keep it completely off, doesn't matter. Develop a rapport means rapport means a kind of a relationship with the other party. Now you cannot, of course, in a 15 minute time or a 20 minute time, it you'll not be able to. Sorry, just a minute, I was just reading through something. In a 15, 20 minute, you can't develop a big relationship, but what you can do is a little bit of a relationship and that is what we call rapport. Okay, so now that the list of frequently asked questions are there up there on the screen, I'd like to ask some of you some of these questions. Let's say the first question, I think this is a very commonly asked question. It is, tell me something about yourself. May I ask any one of you to volunteer? Any of you students can volunteer and uh, Vikas will uh, unmute, give, unmute your mic and you probably help me by trying and answering that question. Somebody is asking me, how can we get confidence? Some, some tips. I'll, I'll talk about that. Let us look at this question and then I'll come and answer that question about how to get more confidence. Who will volunteer to answer that question? The question is one of the most frequently asked question. Tell me something about yourself. Come on, one of you volunteer to answer this. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, most of the time, sir, the, the interviewer asks this question, uh, tell me about yourself. So mostly uh, we will uh, we define about ourselves. So, so what will you say, Vikas? Yeah, like of course, sir. Oh. Sir, I'm audible? Yes, you are audible. I 
recent uh, i have a one year experience from india mart hello yes yes go ahead yes sir uh, I have a one year experience from India Mart, and where my work was uh, to design a catalog for the clients. And recently, I done my internship from Republic Motors, and uh, I have also, uh, I'm also be pursuing a digital marketing course from the uh, inter, uh, internshala.com. And I my hobbies are to playing uh, online games from mobiles whenever I'm free. Nice, very good. very good vikas very good round of applause for vikas yeah that that's the way to answer very good now what happens vikas is many times people say my name is so and so are name is already written in resume this is my educational background that is also written in resume so when you are asked this question you have to understand two things one is what is he wanting to test you on he is wanting to test you on your ability to communicate so that's why he has asked you such a simple question because in this question you can say anything and get away with it so my suggestion to all of you is that you will definitely get this question and i suggest you should prepare the question in such a the answer in such a way that you talk about yourself without referring to what is there in your resume at the same time you make it so interesting and you add so many other details which makes it interesting for the interviewer to listen to all right so remember that is the trick the trick is to talk about yourself in such a manner that you can make it sound interesting for the interviewer also don't forget we talked about the jd right at the beginning when we are talking about preparation now if you know the job description if you know what the role is then what can do what can happen you can always tailor your answer to the requirement of that particular job okay somebody is asking us some can i try i think it is madhuri bansal uh, sir madhur bansal he wants madhur to bansal? ask uh, yes sir can you unmute her we can hear yeah, from her yes sir madhur please open your mic good afternoon sir yes madhur uh, go sir, ahead sir my my name is madhur bansal and in short i would like to say madhur bansal go get her dream achiever and multi field experienced person passionate towards my work and the dreams i want to achieve fantastic madhur beautiful beautiful this is the kind of answer that the interviewer when he hears he says yaar i want this guy because what does he want he want somebody with the confidence to say that wonderful thank you sir brilliant brilliant very good very good uh, somebody is asking me sir can we say about our hobbies yes you can you can talk about your hobbies as long as your hobbies will sound interesting to the other person for example supposing your hobby is dancing now that is not interesting enough right but supposing you say my hobby is to a uh, follow latest technological developments that is happening across the world now that makes it interesting right uh chirag is it chirag goel can you unmute chirag goel please vikas yes sir i'm chirag chirag will you please respond you were talking about hobbies so have you got my sorry there is a request by a participant hai ek banda uske paas hi hai 
I, I don't think I quite understood what you said. Can you please say that again? Raj, I unmute you. So please tell what you what you have question. Which what question you have? That's fine. Vikas Chirag is not talking, so uh, we'll yes, have sir. to go on. It's already 15.54. No, sir. Yes, go ahead, please. Chirag, you are on live. Hi, sir. Today. Hi. Yes, sir. Firstly, so good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, to you. Good afternoon Chirag. Um, I like the webinar so much. Sir, video I so the camera is different, the front camera is bad. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. Fine, fine, Chirag. Huh. So, uh, how, whatever I told about hobbies, is that clear to you? Yeah, no, sir, that's in the beach, I had a connection, so I'll repeat the hobbies again. Okay, I was saying that you can talk about hobbies, you can talk about hobbies, but you can talk about yes, hobbies. Agar aapke hobbies aise ho, mm -hmm. jo matlab uh, interviewer ko interesting sunai de, to aap uski baare mein baat kar sakte hain. Jaise ki example ke liye maine kya kaha. Agar aapne hobby mein likha hai na ki mera hobby to dancing hai ji. To dancing aap, aapka agar hobby hai, mm -hmm. to interviewer interested nahi hai. Par socho aapka hobby hai technology, mm -hmm. technology janna ya Business mm -hmm. ke janna, yes, ya economic ke janna. Then those are interesting hobbies that you can certainly talk about. All right, Chirag? Okay, a few other questions. One question that all of you are going to be asked. They will definitely ask you, interviewer will ask you, are you, you know, what are your strengths and weaknesses? This is a common question. I think somebody is asking me a question. Chavi. Yes, sir. She want to ask one question. Sir. Yeah, Chavi is saying, if you are if we are pursuing MBA, is it need to add all the education in our CV or we just add bachelor's or master's in our CV? Okay, here is my take. If you are a fresher, then it is a good idea, Chavi, to put your bachelor's and master's. Your 10th and 12th, you may not put there. But supposing you have got excellent marks in both 10th and 12th, it is a good idea to put that also. But having said that, Chavi, it is not mandatory. It is not mandatory. It is your bachelor's and master's which are more important. Chavi? Priyanka is asking us, sir, can we connect our answer to current situation? Yes, of course you can. Of course you can, certainly, and you must. Because that tells the interviewer that a, how relevant you are and how aware you are that you can connect to current circumstances, Priyanka. So I'm, I'm going to back to my uh, list of question and answers. The questions were, what are your strengths and weaknesses? How will you answer that question? Now, here are my guidance to you on that question. Now, strengths are very easy to talk about. You can say, I have great communication skill, or I'm able to work in teams. I, 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 I follow. I'm very, I'm very interested in technology. You can talk, go on and on and on about yourself. But how do you communicate your weakness? Here are two strategies. First strategy, talk about your weakness in such a way that it does not remain a weakness but becomes a strength. Just to give you an example, this is just an example. I'm not saying you should say this only. You have to decide what is it that you feel is right for you. One example that I'm giving to you is you can say, one of my biggest weakness is that I have set very high standards for myself. And because of these high standards, I sometimes feel frustrated. 
Now, high standards is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But because it can lead you to depression or frustration sometimes is a weakness. So you are projecting yourself in such a manner that it becomes a strength for you. That's strategy number one. Strategy number two, you talk about your weakness and you talk about your weakness in such a manner that you say that I recognize it as, as a weakness and I'm working hard to improve that weakness. For example, I remember one person came for an interview to my to me once and I, when I asked him, tell me something about, tell me about your weakness, he said, so one of my biggest weakness is my inability to speak excellent English. But I realized this and I know that, that, that my English can, can improve tremendously. And you know what I'm doing? I'm working every day to improve upon the quality of English that I speak. I tell you, I thought very, very positively about that particular person. Because A, he's able to recognize his weakness. B, he's able to start working to improve on his weaknesses. Because remember, everybody knows in this world that everybody has some weakness or the other. Weakness though will be there. When we are human beings, we will all have strengths. We will also have weaknesses. So what do we do? We need to work upon our weaknesses so that we can improve upon them and get better and better with time. So that is what it proves, All right? They can, of course, ask you questions about your last job. If you have had a last job, like Vikas talked about India Mart. So if Vikas comes to an interview to me and he talks about India Mart, I'm definitely going to ask him about India Mart and what does India Mart do. I'm going to check him out on India Mart. So that's also something which is very, very common. Another thing now, one more thing that the interviewer will may definitely ask you is, what are your long-term and short-term goals? So I'm asking you here, who would like to answer this? If I ask you, what are your goals? In life? It's, a, it's a very common question. And you may it several times. What can your answer be? Would somebody like to try? Sir, I am like to try. Go ahead, Chirag. Sir, sir, my short term goal is to matab, jo, ab, jo company hai, jis apna wo lena chahte hai, usi humne to tak And long term goal. Matab, tak leke jana. Jis company Very mein jaise, jis company mein hum apply kar rahe hain, matab, usko, matab, ki tak leke jana. Very good. Very good. Chirag, nice. Yes, so you Thank can you, say sir. that. You can say that. Essentially, what I'm trying to, the point I try, I'm trying to bring home here for all of you is that you, all of you, young students, must write down your goals. You must have goals. One of the most important things to do and uh, this is also I'm addressing here to Malik Saab also, is for students to go through a goal setting workshop where they may learn how to set their goals. Because tomorrow when you go for that interview and if you can talk about your goals, your goals which can be professional goals, your goals which can be some, some financial goals that you have and you can structure your goals, what does it tell the interviewer? It communicates to the interviewer that you are a person who is so focused at what you want in your life that you will work hard towards answering it. Uh, okay, Madhur is asking me, sir, when we answer this question, should we relate it with uh, company or should we tell our own? No. Why only company? It's your own. He's asking you about your goals in life, Madhur. So you, and that's when, when you go prepared. So if you go through a goal setting workshop and if you kind of set your goals and there are, there are some, some techniques that we can do 
for that. And if you can talk about it, what do you come across? You come across as a youngster who has strategic vision. Today, I'm telling you, companies are wanting to find people who have strategic vision. Short-term goal can be key player in the company. Yes, certainly. Respectable person in the company. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to the motivation question in a minute. All right. So, remember, if you have done your goals well, if you have gone through a goal-setting exercise, then it, you will be able to talk about it very, very well. Remember, there was a Stanford University study done some uh, 30 years ago. Yes, about, about 30 years ago. And they conducted this study for a period of 20 years. And what they found out, they found out that successful people or successful students were those students who had written down goals. And that's why it will be a very, very good idea if you go through that goal setting exercise. Uh, Somebody is asking me, interviewer asked, what motivates you? What should we? Yeah. Okay, good question. I think Neha is asking us this question. Neha is asking, if interviewer asks me, what motivates you? Yes, so that's a good question. Now, what motivates you? You could talk about money as a motivator here. But if you talk about money, it's not such so much of a great idea. We should talk about uh, achievement. We should talk about recognition. We should talk about you know, achieving something, something bigger in life, something some, or, or doing something which is meaningful. No? Yeah, absolutely. So those are the things if you can talk about and if you can say that is what motivates me. Just to give you an example, uh, Neha, since you asked this question to me, I'm telling you, I'm asking you rather, when I'm talking to you now all, more than an hour has passed, do you think I'm motivated to run this session with all of you? So you may ask me what motivates me. Now I can tell you there is no money, but what motivates me is that if I can make a difference in the life of even two, three, four, five students amongst all of you, that motivates me. Means that is something which is going to be meaningful is what motivates me. So if you can talk like that, Neha, it will go a long way to explaining to the interviewer that you are somebody who means business. Shalu has said to find an organization where I utilize my skills and enhance them. Yes, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, Hitesh, I think, is asking us, where do you see yourself in five years? That's the next question I was coming to. Yes, absolutely. Where do you see yourself in five years, 10 years? And that question's answer, Hitesh, will also be related to your goals. So if you have done your goals well, these will be very, very easy for you to answer. And next thing that the uh, interviewer may ask you is, do you, do you know something about our company? And there, of course, is your research. Because is saying, sir, it's compulsory to decide a long-term goal or short-term because I never think about my future. I always focus on my present situation. <laughs> because... Uh, it is uh, completely up to you. It is nothing is mandatory in this world. But we have uh, uh, research figures from uh, several research done by uh, several top universities in the world. And that says that people are not able to succeed because they don't know what they want to achieve in their lives. So that is why if you are able to set some goals for yourself, it will be extremely beneficial for you because... Uh, Chavi is saying sometimes when you go for an interview, interviewer is not in a good mood by any reason. He may simply reject you in that situation. How can we motivate ourselves? You are right. It can happen, Chavi. And it will be your uh, probably uh, a little bit of a luck factor there. But then there's nothing much you can do about it. In fact, let me tell you, Chavi, what happened yesterday night. One of my dear friends, old friends of mine, he called me last night around 
1045, he said his younger son uh, had gone to SRM College in Chennai and campus interview he was hired in Wipro. And yesterday night he gets an email from Wipro where Wipro says we are revoking the order offer that we had made to you. Now he is telling me, how do I keep this guy motivated? You, you have worked in Wipro. Would you know somebody? Can you found out what happened? Now I know from my experience in Wipro, if the order has been revoked, nobody can do anything. But then we still have to get motivated. Failures, remember, failures are always uh, stepping stones. We must look at them as stepping stones, Chavi, and that will always help us make keep ourselves motivated so that we can move forward in our lives. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. I have one last question, uh, uh, and then I will open this up for all question and answer, which is about salary, which somebody asked me. If the interviewer asks you for a salary and he says, well, how much salary do you think you are worth? What should you answer? Should you talk a figure? Should you say 5 lakhs, 6 lakhs, 10 lakhs? Let me give you my perspective. Let me give you my thoughts here. If you are a fresher, if you are going for your first job, I believe it's not such a good idea to talk about money. Why? Because as a fresher, you still do not know how much you are worth. But having said that, let me also ask you, if you get your dream company and if your, if your dream company asks you and says, you come and work with us for one year, one year you will be a trainee and we are going to only pay you 25,000 rupees a month as stipend for the first year. After you finish your training for the first year, we will give you posting and we, you will come into regular salary format. Will you join or will you not join? Say it is IBM or say it's Google or say it is uh, Infosys. What will you do? I'm sure many of you will say yes. Why? Because you are not looking at the money for the first year. What are you looking for? You are looking for a big brand or you are looking for an opportunity to learn more or you are looking for exposure or you are looking for opportunity. Since you are looking for opportunity, since you are looking for brand, it's not such a good idea to talk money at that time. Say, so good idea to say is, hey, sir, I'm, a, I'm an absolute fresher getting out of college. And I'm sure if I join a brand like yours, you're going to take care of me. And I really don't have to think about any salary. I'm looking at, at this as an opportunity to really hone my skills really learn more and develop myself so that I can be a well-rounded professional. That's when you will gain a lot of respect in the eye of the interviewer. All right. So I'd like to end my session with a quote for all of you. Uh, I will, of course, send this uh, slide deck that I have prepared to uh, Malik Saab and Malik Saab can share it with all students. Uh, Confucius, who used to be a Chinese philosopher, he said that, of course, nowadays nobody likes everything Chinese, but <laughs> I think you can just listen to what he said. He said, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. So I, my suggestion to all of you youngsters is... <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So I was suggesting that all of you should look forward to that great job that you want for yourself. Prepare well for that interview. And I think if you do your preparation well, you will get your dream job. May God be with all of you. I have finished my session. We are open to question and answers now. And uh, please. Go ahead with your questions. Uh, Lisa has a question there. What can we do at the time when interviewer gets confused by questions asking by himself? Uh, I'm not too sure I've understood your question, Lisa. Are you saying that the interviewer himself is confused? Yes, sir. Sometimes interview also got confused and we also got confused. So what when like we can do. 
Okay, here is here are my thoughts. So, if you think, if you think you have got confused, and if you think the interviewer is also confused, you may say, you may just say, uh, excuse me, sir, I think I have not. Uh, quite understood or maybe you have not quite understood let me clarify and you may say what you have understood so that he can correct you if you are wrong or he can say yeah but that's right and if he says that's right then you are not confused at all and you have confu confirmed your confusion lisa thank you sir uh, Chavi is asking me, I want to know that it shows a good impact if I add my copy of certification with CV or not. What kind of a certification are you talking about, Chavi? Uh, like the Java certifications, Google certifications I have. So I want to All ask. Right. Okay. No, you, it's not necessary for you to uh, add um, any certificates. You may just... Uh, Add a point in your resume or your CV where you write additional certification and talk about their Java certification or Google certification. Interviewer will ask you. If you okay. write something like that, interviewer will definitely ask you about it. And that's when you can talk about it. Shall we? Okay, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so... Go ahead. We still have some time. Yeah, so Abhijiji, we will be taking... Uh, uh, questions now uh, if, if uh, yeah. your part is over so we will do is in this manner like uh, we will start with madhur so because right. madhur uh, has noted all the questions which uh, students send to him so if sure. any question is, is still unanswered so madhur can make the video on and ask the question please madhur sure. thank you sir for such a wonderful webinar uh, many of the questions till now have been answered like uh, students like Nandini, Ankit, Ritika, Anshu. Their questions have been already answered in this great uh, session. Some students are also left like Shubham Goyal, whose question is how to improve communication skills and from where we can start. Good one. Uh, communication skills, of course, is something which uh, takes a little time. So Shubham, uh, you should start immediately. Uh, now, I hope communication skills, when you say you are, you might also be talking about English language skill, because I'm sure in an interview, uh, it, is a, it is definitely going to be in English, a business interview, and therefore it could also mean English language. So uh, my suggestion is for youngsters, if you have difficulty with English, you should read more English, you should listen to more English, and you should speak more English. You will, of course, make mistakes, but that's okay to make mistakes. But if you don't do it, you will never learn it. I have also seen that people generally make mistakes in three areas of English grammar. First is the use of articles. Second is the use of tenses. And the third is the use of preposition. If you go online and look for exercises on these three elements, you will find hundreds of exercises. And if you practice them, it will help you immensely to improve the English that you speak grammatically. And then, as I said, practice, practice, practice. Shubham? Absolutely right, sir. Practice makes the man perfect. Uh, our next question Absolutely. is from Nehal Mittal. Uh, she, she wants to ask that uh, uh, during interview, how to maintain our facial expressions up to how much extent they are being judged. <laughs> they are being judged every minute, every second. Unconsciously, I'm telling you, expressions are judged by people every time. So Nehal, your expressions are being watched by people. Many times in an interview, you will also face an interview board. There could be two or three people. And you will see there will be one person quietly watching you. So they are watching. You are under observation. So my suggestion is don't try to fudge anything. I told that during the course of the session. Let it be natural. Be yourself. 
I am telling you what is natural is always the best. That's why Nehal, don't try to do extra. Don't try to show, let me show that I'm more enthusiastic. No, not required. Be yourself. And when you are yourself, it will reflect positively on the interviewer. Nehal? I believe her question has been answered. Uh, next we have is Shalu from MLC Biotechnology. Madhur, you can, you can, uh, to, Madhur, you can mention all the questions in one go. <laughs> okay, sir. Sir, uh, sir, how can we objectify our career objectives and why a student from another field is asked to do job in marketing? <laughs> Let me let me take it one by one. The first one was how to objectify the career objective. Now, this is a very important element in your resume. That oh, we write a career objective. Now, that again, this is also related to the goal setting that we talked about. It will be easier for you to objectify it when you have it clear in your head. If you don't have it clear in your head, you will write something and you will say, Yar, ho gaya. that's why I'm saying, please, please. And I'm suggesting to all of you students, please pick up this book. This book is called See You at the Top. It is written by a gentleman called Zig Ziglar. He has a whole chapter dedicated to goal setting. Set these goals for yourself. When you set these goals for yourself, it will become much more easier because you know what is your objective in life. Abhi to kya hai? You, have, you have no idea. Kya likhu, kya likhu? I am saying set those goals at least for three years, if not 15, 20 years. Agar 15 years, 20 years, aage hum nahi soch pa rahe abhi, no problem. Kam se kam teen saal, paan saal to soch lo. Ho likhu. All right. Second question, why other students are asked for marketing? Abhi kya hai ki marketing is one area where many people don't want to go. So they are looking for people and they are looking for people from various industries. They think, Are if I get somebody who has technology information, this guy can do a better job. And there is nothing like that. I can tell all of you and I can tell you proudly that the first five years of my life, I have done sales and marketing. Me, first five years of my life. First three, sorry, first two years as an executive and then as a sales manager. There's no shame in it. Marketing and sales teach you a whole lot of lessons in life. Huh? Fail karna hai. Failure bhi hai. Or I tell you, failure also teaches us a lot of lessons. It makes you more confident. So there's nothing wrong. But yes, what to do? Bajar mein jobs, marketing or sales ke zada hai. That's why they're looking for more people. Baki jobs kam hai. What to do? Jil, jo job jada hoga, wo kisi ko bhi dhoon lenge yaar. That is the reason why. There's no other reason. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Okay, so now Lisa can come with uh, any question. Uh, which has come in the chat box and is uh, still unanswered. Lisa. Good evening, sir. Yeah. How are Good you, evening, sir? Lisa. Good, very well. Sir, here is a question from Chavi. What is good platform for applying a job, according to you? <laughs> okay. Uh, there are several of them today. Um, but I think worthwhile is to try a LinkedIn job search. Uh, I think uh, many youngsters, when you use social media, you definitely do Facebook, you do Instagram, uh, you do others also. But I think it's very important that you set up a good LinkedIn profile for yourself. Uh, get some advice from somebody a little senior, somebody who can mentor you, give you a little guidance on creating the LinkedIn profile and then use the LinkedIn job search. That's a good idea to do. Uh, many other, uh, there are, I mean, I, I, I know all of you know about the knockeries and the monsters of the world, uh, but uh, 
LinkedIn also is a good idea, which I think you should uh, look for. Lisa? Thank you, sir. Here is another question. What should be taken care regarding our location or our handset laptop for virtual interview? Say that again. I don't think I've understood. Sir, what should be taken care regarding our location and handset at the time of virtual interview? For virtual interviews. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Very, very good question. Excellent question. Excellent question. I think the most important thing is if you have a laptop with enough space and, and if your, if your uh, processor speed is good enough, it can do most of the job today. But having said that, it's very important that you take care of two, three things. For example, for example, today itself, our session was at three o'clock, but I logged in at 2.30 and between me, uh, Malik Saab and the others, we did a test run. So now you might not be able to do it. You should get somebody and you should test it out. And of course, uh, I, I'm not here to propagate any particular brand, but any laptop, any good laptop with uh, enough processor speed and enough RAM uh, will be helpful uh, for you. Uh, today, all these technologies are very, very useful. But what you must uh, keep in mind is that you may have a power cut. And for that, if you have a UPS backup, it will always be very, very useful. Sir, here is one question from my side. Like, yes, there are always irritating question comes. Why should we hire you? Even they also know about our strengths, but they always put that question, why should we hire you? And what's different from others in you? So how to handle that question? Yeah. Two strategies, Lisa. First strategy is look at the job description. What was the job description? And then look at your skills and can you match your skills with the job description? The moment you are able to match your skills with the job description, you can tell him, I am the best person for you. That's strategy number one. Strategy number two is look at inherent qualities inside you. For example, you may say, well, I may not look as skillful as others, but what I bring to the table is my ability to learn quickly, my positive thinking, my ability to gel with work with people, because today's world is all, all about working with people. It's about teams. I, 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 I can leverage on technology quickly. So give those skills which are generic, but those skills which are very useful for any employer in today's world today. And say, this is what I bring to the table and therefore I feel I'm the right guy. And you must say that with great amount of confidence, Lisa. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for the great session. Thank you, Lisa. So now I request Vikas uh, Sharma and uh, uh, I think uh, Anjali is also there. Uh, so they can make uh, their video on and they can ask the question on behalf of YouTube viewers uh, who have posted their questions on uh, uh, YouTube channel. So uh, you, both of you can ask, please. Uh, sir, there is a question asked by Neha there on YouTube. My question is, if you ask, do you have any question? So what should we ask at that time? I, I think because I didn't hear you clearly, but I think what you are asking is what kind of question can I ask the interviewer, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. okay, good question. Very, very good question. In fact, I had thought I will put in a slide on this also, but when I looked at the time, I thought uh, maybe uh, this will we'll keep for some other time, but that, that's a good question. So what we can ask about the interviewer? We can ask the interviewer questions about the organization. We can ask about their management style. We may ask about what kind of learning opportunities do they provide to youngsters. We can ask about what, what are the new kind of technologies that they can expose us to if we are going in for a technology position. We can ask about their management style, learning opportunities, growth opportunities, training and development opportunities, all of that, Vikas. Yes, sir. Okay. And second question asked by Ritika Saini uh, from MSC Food Tech. And the whole question is, uh, sometimes we don't have direct answer to the question. Then how to deal with it? 
Yes, uh, sometimes we may not have a direct answer. That's true. So it is very good idea to tell the interviewer that I don't have a direct answer. Let me try and answer it in this way. So the interviewer knows that you are not trying to bluff him or her. And you are honest in your approach. Remember, I said honesty is always the best policy. If the interviewer feels that you are there to bluff him or her, they will certainly not take you on. But if they feel that you have the integrity and the honesty to be truthful, you will always score much higher points. OK, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So Anjali, is there any question from your side? Anjali? Uh, yes, good afternoon, sir. You are not perfectly audible. Uh, please ask sir. question. Yes. Sir, am I audible to you? Yes, yes. OK. Uh, sir, I, uh, I have a question that uh, I want to know how to uh, how to give answers of open-ended questions which are going to be asked during interview. How to handle open-ended questions? Sir, how to give answers of open-ended questions? Yes, I think this question was also there in that list of questions that Malik Sahib had sent me. Yes, sir. Now, now open-ended question means all questions which starts with uh, certain words and which invites you to express yourself. For example, I may ask you, what kind of a career are you looking forward to? That's an open-ended question. So obviously now, if I have a, given you a question like that, it would be a good idea for you to open and share a lot of thoughts and ideas about what you have in your mind. So. Open-ended questions need to be elaborated. You cannot give a yes or no answer to them. You have to give an answer which is elaborate, which gives fair amount of information about whatever the interviewer is asking and gives him a little bit of insight into you as a person. Anjali? Okay. I think uh, her answer is, her question is answered. Uh, uh, somebody is asking us, uh, please share latest performa of resume. Uh, Balik Saab, if you want, I'll send you one. You can uh, pass it to me. Yes, we can share with the student. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got it. Yeah, I can, I can share it. I will share it with uh, uh, Malik Saab and the team, and uh, you will yes, certainly sir. get it. Uh. Okay. Okay, Abhijit ji, uh, I think uh, uh, it's uh, one and a half hour. And uh, we can talk on this very burning topic for uh, two, three more hours also. <laughs> but uh, oh, yes, of course. Yeah. So, but we are having the time limit, and you, uh, you are also having your uh, schedule. So, on behalf of uh, Training Placement Cell Guru Jambeshwar University of Science and Technology Hisar, I express my heartly gratitude to Mr. Vijit Bhattacharya ji, who has spared his precious time to make our students uh, be aware of, about this. Uh, the virtues of uh, online interviews and uh, offline interviews also. And I also thank to all the students, all the volunteers, all the YouTube channel viewers who have uh, witnessed this program, who have viewed this program. So you can write in the comment section of our YouTube channel, how was this program? How was your experience? And if anything, any question is still uh, unanswered and you want to ask the question, you can uh, post the, that question in the comment section. So now, uh, Abhijit Bhattacharya ji, I request you to uh, say few concluding words, and after that, we will wind up this session. Please. Well, uh, to conclude, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Malik Saab, and thank you to the university for to thinking about me. I feel honored that you uh, gave me a chance to talk to your students. I hope students have been benefited. Students can... Uh, always uh, connect with me over uh, LinkedIn or any of the social media. I'm there and I can help them individually also. Mm -hmm. I look forward to many more sessions uh, where I can uh, be useful and I can help in guiding or mentoring the students to success. I will be glad to do that. I wish all the students absolutely best of life and best in their careers, best in their lives. 
and I hope uh, each one of them will achieve great things in their lives. Thank you and namaste. Okay. Thank you, Vijay ji. So thank you to all the viewers. And on next Friday, we will come again with a new topic and with a new wonderful speaker like today. So till then, thank you. Goodbye.